Hello and welcome to this module on working on the command line. Starting to work in Linux means you have to start with performing simple tasks so as to get familiar with working in the shell. What we'll do in this module is we're going to have a look at running one-line commands on the command line of the bash shell. We're going to have a look at running external commands and finally we'll have a look at command history. The default shell for most Linux distributions is the bash shell, or born again shell. The shell that a user runs when he logs in is part of the user properties we will discuss in a later module. But not all users need to have the same shell when they log in, so the administrator determines what the shell for a particular user is going to be. Some other shells you will find in most Linux distros are the C shell, the corn shell, the Z shell, and the TCSH shell. And if you want to use any of these shells and they're not installed, you can easily install them. But as stated, the bash shell is very popular. So we will work in the bash shell for now. Let's have a look at the first command, which is the echo command. The word echo literally means reflected sound. And basically that is also what the echo command does, but then with text instead of sound. So when you run the echo command, you basically print something to the screen. For example, I can say echo hello, and that will print hello to the screen. Or I can print a pretty long string, and that will also be printed to the screen. However, echo is very often used to display the contents of something which we call variables. Now, a variable is part of memory, in the bash shell process, in memory, that has a name and can hold a value. Before we dig into that, we have to understand something about running commands in Linux. When you're logged into the system and are in the shell, of course, you run commands. Most of these commands are not in the shell itself, because that would make the program way too big and inflexible. So most commands and tools are stored somewhere on disk. Now what the shell needs to do if you want to run a command, it will have to find that command. Your shell has a very important variable that holds locations for the shell to search through when trying to find a command that you want to be executed. This variable is called the path variable. Mind you, Linux is case sensitive, so path with capital letters is not the same as path with lowercase letters. Now that path variable contains a colon separated list of subdirectories. In Windows, these are called folders or maps, but in Linux we speak of subdirectories or directories in general. We can use the echo command to display the contents of the path variable. When using a variable in a command, you always prefix it with the dollar sign. The only time that you do not use the dollar sign is when you create the variable or change its contents. So to fill a variable manually, you can run it with the equal sign and no spaces in between. So we run my var equals 10. And then we can display its content by running echo dollar my var. So if we want to display the contents of the path variable, we run echo dollar path. We see that there's a list of subdirectories that are all searched sequentially from the left to the right when executing a command until it finds the command that you want to execute. And if the command is not found, then you will get a command not found message, like this. So if I run LISS, which is not a Linux command, it tells me that it cannot find the command. Now, if you want to know where a particular command is found without executing it, you can run the which command. This which command is a shell built in. So this is actually a program which is loaded when you start the bash shell. So this is referred to as an internal command. This means that it is not a command on disk, like, for example, ls or a copy command or the remove command. These are commands that are on disk. This one, the which command, is a shell built in. So if you run which, you can specify that you want to know which command will be executed if you execute it. So when I run which ls, we find the ls command in slash user slash bin. Now, what happens if you empty the path variable like this? Now, when we search for the ls command again, running which ls, 
it tells me that there is no directories to search through, so we cannot find the ls command. But when we run it from a directory itself, we can run it without any problem, because we tell the shell where to find the ls command, simply by specifying the path name slash user slash bin slash ls. Next to the uh, built-in shell command which, we also know the type command. This looks a bit like the which command, in that it tells you which command will be executed when you run it from the command line. So if we run type ls, it'll tell us that it will run the ls command. And if you want to know what it is, you can use the dash t option to tell you what type of command it is. So when we run type dash t ls, it tells us that this is a file on disk. But when we run type dash t cd, so the change directory command, it will tell us that this is a shell built in. And finally, we'll have a look at command line history. The variable hist file contains the name of the file that stores the commands a user types. The file belongs to the user, so not to the shell. So even if a user would open three different bash shells, all commands by default would be stored in the file that we find in the hist file variable. The file is called .bash underscore history and is located in the user's login directory and all files starting with the dot in the name will be hidden files so you can view them using ls-a. And the hist size variable determines the number of lines that the hist file will store. The default is 1000, so this means that when you enter command number 1001 it will remove the first command from the list. Now to search this file there are multiple ways. We'll discuss only one here, which is the Ctrl-R combination. Ctrl-R will open the file for reverse searching. You type any character of the command you're looking for and it will give you the first item from the bottom up. When you then type Ctrl-R again it will find the next item and so on. So you can relatively quickly search for the command you need. Once you find it simply press enter and it will execute it once more. So in summary, we looked at the echo command that will print text to the screen, we discussed what a variable is, and focused on the path variable which is used to find commands on disk. Also, we used the which command to tell us the location of a particular command, and the type command to show us whether the command is actually a command on disk, or something else, like a built-in for example. There are more possibilities that we'll see later. And we use the hist file and his size variable to refer to the .bash history file in the user's login directory. And finally, we saw how we could find commands in the history file using the Ctrl R combination. Now, if you like, you can pause the video and have a go at the following commands.